Is the mother tongue always the strongest language of a person? And why still mother and not father? Or why is it not called better parents tongue? I'm going to dive into this and other questions like how important the mother tongue is for a healthy overall development of a multilingual child. Also, do international families have to necessarily use their mother tongue with their children? All of this in a second. But first, if you're new here, please consider subscribing and joining my mailing list for more useful content on how to raise multilingual children. My name is Andrea and I'm a teacher specialized in multilingualism, currently working at a trilingual school in Zurich, Switzerland with children and parents from all over the world. I also raise my children in several languages and share my know-how and experience in this channel. So please hit the like button and help me help more cosmopolitan families. My cousin is visiting me in a few hours and I remember her wanting to persuade her father to speak his mother language, mother tongue, to his granddaughter. He grew up bilingual in Ecuador with a mother he spoke in English, with a father in Spanish. In his case, his mother tongue, meaning the language of the mother, is English and still he never used it to communicate with his children, let alone grandchildren. Now why is that? Isn't the mother tongue supposed to be the strongest language of a person? The language that we are supposed to pass on to our children? Not always. Let's see why. The term mother tongue refers to the language that a person learns from birth or early childhood and is considered their first language. It is also sometimes referred to as a person's native language, the one that a person is most familiar with and comfortable using in a daily communication. This doesn't apply though to people that moved to another country as young adults and are after several years more comfortable using the language of that place. Their mother tongue remains the one that they learned in early childhood. Now, the term mother tongue is a bit old fashioned. In the past, it was clear that the language that the mother spoke was the strongest of a person because mothers were the main caregivers. In our modern lives though, that often doesn't apply anymore. Children don't necessarily spend most of their time with their mothers anymore. The term mother tongue has been used for several centuries. It's an old term, but it's still commonly used today. Well, there are other terms that are sometimes used, such as native language or first language. Mother tongue remains a widely recognized and accepted term for referring to the language that a person learns as a child from their mother or primary caregiver. So it is not necessarily attached to the mother, but much more to the person that has the most contact with the child. Mother tongue continues to be used in both academic and everyday concepts. However, since the primary caregivers are not necessarily the mothers anymore in professional context, the term first language is often preferred. The other day, I bumped into my neighbor and she was annoyed at her husband because she said, look, he just doesn't manage to speak his mother tongue to our children. They are like missing out this amazing opportunity. And then um, just to give you a little bit of a context, he um, grew up here in Switzerland, but his parents are from Chile. So he grew up speaking Spanish at home, but the majority of language is Swiss German or high German. And so he, he grew up and he lives here and, 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 and my neighbor, she's wanting him to speak Spanish to the kids, but he just doesn't, he, he can't, it doesn't work. He, he always falls back to, to German. And then I was thinking and, 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 I, and I told her, look, the reason is that you are asking him to use a method that is not suitable in your case. You know, it's like the wrong language learning method. The Opol method is not the one he should be using with Spanish because in the end, his strongest language became Swiss German and German. That's the one he feels more comfortable with. And he also grew up with that one. So actually that one could also be considered his mother tongue, right? And so uh, what, what, what he needs to do if he still wants to 
pass on Spanish to the kids is to use the uh, language learning method OSOL, the one situation, one language method. And so back to our topic, some cosmopolitan couples are sometimes confused about what languages to speak to their children because the level of their mother tongue decreased while being abroad uh, and another language became stronger. The rule of thumb is to pass on to your children the language that you grew up with. But because of globalization, as you saw in the previous example, some family compositions have become quite complex. And so there are more and more exceptions to the rule. In other words, it's necessary to analyze each family case individually to make the right decisions. So if you need more help with your unique case, don't be shy and contact me. You will find all the information in the description below. Let's investigate how important the development of the mother tongue is for a healthy overall development of a child. A child's first language or mother tongue is important for their healthy development in many, 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 many ways. Here are just some reasons why. First, for communication. The mother tongue is the language a child is most comfortable with and understands best. It is the language that facilitates communication with family members, caregivers and peers. When children can communicate effectively, they are more likely to feel confident and secure, which are two basic needs. The next reason is the cognitive development. Research suggests that children who learn their mother tongue well have an easier time learning additional languages later on. Science shows that they need to develop at least one language well enough to build up other languages on top of it effectively. Children who have a strong foundation in their first language are better equipped to learn and retain new information. And that is something that I see every single day in my classroom. I can't tell which children have a strong home language or first language. But Achtung, this doesn't mean that children can't learn lang several languages simultaneously. That is an option. Children can have two first languages, for example, but the quantity in quality input must be accordingly high. And if it is not possible to do that for some reason, then it's better to resort to sequential multilingualism. The next reason is the emotional development. The mother tongue is closely tied to a child's cultural identity and sense of belonging. When children can communicate in their mother tongue, they feel a sense of connection to the family, their roots, their community. This helps to build a strong self-esteem, identity and also confidence. This is crucial for a healthy development and a successful school career. Really, really important. This reminds me of some of my students that are really taking off like rockets. They learn three languages at school and have one or two languages at home and still it feels like I cannot give them enough and they are really taking in everything they can and learning amazingly well. It's incredible what the brains can do, really. But when I stop and think about, okay, what, what are they doing? differently to the, the kids that are struggling with um, developing in several languages at the same time. I, I have to say that it, it's exactly what science shows as well, that these kids have a strong, well-developed home languages, first languages, and they are able to build up their knowledge on top of that solid ground. That makes a difference. The next point is the social development. Learning a language is a social activity that involves interacting with other people. Children learn through their mother tongue lots of social skills such as turn taking, listening and responding to others. And all of this they learn from parents that speak confidently and fluently the strongest language they grew up with. So in summary, a child's mother tongue is important for their health development in many, many ways. It provides a foundation for communication, cognitive, emotional and social development. The term mother tongue is rather old, 
but still widely used and it means basically the strongest language your group up with. Thanks for watching, dear friends. Watch these videos, they might interest you as well. Please share your thoughts in the comments and talk to you soon.